everybody. Um, today we're going to have Mrs. Rock and I'm <coughs> going to co-teach a lesson on um, stereotypes in Italian American. Um, hi, I'm Emily Rock. I am an English teacher at Oakhurst High School. I have been here for about 10 years. Uh, when I was asked to do this lesson um, about Italian American stereotypes, I really looked at it like an English teacher. So first thing I always think about is purpose. Um, what did I want the kids to sort of see in their own daily lives? We talk a lot about stereotypes in the media. And if you remember, we talked about this idea that like you could look at an ad and think there's nothing wrong with that until you stared at it and stared at it and stared at it. And then you might think, hold on, maybe they're adhering to this. Maybe they're implying this. Peter, what are you doing? Speaking Italian. Peter, you can't speak Italian just because you have a mustache. So I chose that as sort of the opening to our journal. And I always use journals as an opportunity to get into the kids' heads, have them express something, and then relate that to real content. Here's what you're gonna talk about in your journal. You can react to that clip, of course. Um, whatever you thought, especially if you have a time American heritage and that offended you, I wanna know. But also, I want you to tell me what Italian American stereotypes exist in the media. When you think Italian American, what do you think? And lastly, how are these things harmful? Uh, particularly to Italian Americans. So their journal question was about their ideas about Italian Americans and that became the introduction to the ads I showed them and the video clips, the commercials that I showed them. All right, now this is a really early political cartoon, probably like 1920. Um, and you can see that these are Italian immigrants. Um, here's another one. And this is the Italian, allegedly. What do you notice about his Dirty. physical structure, Toby? His face. In what way? What is it? What do you think like it's supposed eight. to recall? Like an eight, right? Did you get that when you saw it? That's um, why it says homo erectus. Yes, it's a, an allusion to homo erectus. Okay, so it says, and this is the caption, one pound of spaghetti, kerchief round the neck, stiletto in the foot skin pants. I don't know what that means. A bunch of garlic gulped down like animals do, and talent for shining shoes. So they can sort of trace throughout history that initial anti-immigration ad all the way through to the Jersey Shore, which it really inherently was the same stereotype. Um, it just looked modern and shinier and prettier, but it was the same awful idea. I got a mean. What is your mean? Could I have some of everything? Mm -hmm. I got a nickel. A nickel, huh? My show. I pick you up. Awesome. And that was kind of the beginning of the lesson, and that would lead to new information in the history portion, and eventually, what would become their writing assignment. Imagine that you are living in mid-century America and have read an anti-immigration editorial that uses one of the Darwinism and anti-Italian sentiment excerpts as its proof. As a well-educated and forward-thinking citizen, you decide to write a rebuttal of sorts in editorial form to the editor of this local paper. Not only will you express, express the offensiveness of their point of view, but you will use information you have learned today to refute their adherence to stereotypes. So here's what you should do. Hi, I'm Kristen Resch, and I'm a history teacher at Oakcrest High School. I've been here for 13 years, and what I wanted to do was show that you can incorporate the lessons created by the Italian and Italian American Heritage Commission into what any history teacher is doing um, throughout the year. So we just finished up a lesson on imperialism and in that lesson we were talking about social Darwinism and how that acted as um, a motivation for imperialism and also as a justification for imperialism. So how then was Darwin's theory, survival of the fittest, applied to justify or, or even used as a motive for imperialism? Fittest and the best like, country, the more powerful country can take your like, smaller, less powerful country. So I was able to tie that idea in with the Darwinism and the uh, racist propaganda uh, with Italian Americans migrating to this country. Early 1900s, when immigrants were coming to this country, there was this great fear that these Italian Americans were going to breed with these Anglo-Saxon Americans and was going to like contaminate this race of people. 
So um, we showed sort of the origins of some of the stereotypes that Mrs. Rock used in her um, introduction and also in her writings then. In your group, you're going to read about an Italian-American that contributed to American society. chart that you've been handed out to share information. So you're going to go around the group and you're going to say, my person was, and you're going to tell your group about that. You're going to tell them their major accomplishments. And I think one of the highlights should be, how does this person refute all the things we've already talked about, the stereotypes, the scientific research? Um, uh, hi, I'm Neil Phillip. I'm a senior here at Oakcrest High School. And I think what really surprised me was uh, how much I actually ended up learning from it. Uh, when Miss Rock had the students do the journal entries, you know, we we sort of take all these stereotypes, especially with a culture as integrated as the Italian, to be uh, we we sort of take it for granted. But when Miss Rock actually had the students go and write this journal entry, I was surprised at how easily and how numerous they were able to come up with these stereotypes. And then to actually see Miss Rush go into all the historical basis for it. It really gives you a good understanding of not only how uh, how Italian stereotypes develop, but how all ethnic stereotypes uh, sort of developed in the U.S. and how important it is that we uh, that we correct some of those uh, instances and how important it is to see the contributions of other cultures. Like the biographies that the students did were actually really cool. I, uh, I obviously rec uh, recognized a few of those names, like Maria Ignesi and, uh, and Frank Sinatra, obviously. But it's cool to see, uh, to see those people in the basis of the actual culture they, uh, that they're in, as opposed to just some sort of figurehead that we, we see in pop culture and in a history class, like a math class. Uh, in the end, I think what the kids got out of it was they sort of maybe look at things differently and change their point of view. They're more aware of these things and they have a lot more positive images of Italian Americans.